Hello, everyone, and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016, The Basics. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to be covering tables. So tables are where we store our data for our application. And a table is made up of columns and rows. Now, each one of the columns inside of a row is called a field. The other thing that we need to know about tables is the data type that goes into these columns. So for example, here under the ID column, we have numbers. Then underneath each one of the other columns, these are text. Though it is not strictly a rule, you typically don't want to have any fields in your tables that are empty. Let's go ahead and make our first table. So let's start by creating a new blank desktop database. And I'm going to go ahead and call this Programming DB. Now, right away, Access will create a Table 1 table for us. For now, I'm going to leave the ID column alone. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this section here where it says Click to Add. And you'll notice that we get a dropdown of several different types of data that we can store in this column. For this example, I'm just going to make a table full of names of different people. So for the first name, I want this to just be text. So I'm going to select short text. Now this column is going to contain the first name of the people that I want to store in this table. So I'm going to go ahead and use the title of first name. Now I want you to notice how I named this column. Notice that the first letter of each word is capitalized and that there are no spaces between the words. This is a convention I strongly urge you to stick to. I'm going to go ahead and add another column here of short text and call this last name. Let's go ahead and save the table and we'll be prompted to give it a name. For now, I'm going to give this table a name of people. Now there's a specific reason I named this table people. And that is, in general, you want to name your tables the plural of a noun. So since this table will contain a list of people, it makes sense that I would give it the name of people. Now let's go ahead and add a first name. I'll just use mine, which is Steve. And I'll hit the tab key to switch over to the last name field. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my last name. If I hit tab again, you'll notice that we drop down to the second line. Additionally, you may have noticed that the ID field is automatically populated with the value of 1. We'll be covering what this is for a little bit later, but just know that you can avoid entering in a value for the ID field as the database will automatically populate this for you as you enter new first names and last names into each one of these records. Let's go ahead and add Shane Doe and Denise Johnson. So now we have a first name, a last name for Steve, Shane, and Denise. But what if I wanted to keep track of their birthdays? I could go over here and say click to add, but I'd like to show you there's another more preferred way of going in and editing your tables. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the People tab and select Design View. You'll notice that we have a somewhat different interface here that we're working with. In this case, our ID field or column is of a data type auto number, which kind of explains why we've automatically incremented the values for the ID field. The database here is set to auto number, so it will automatically number them. Then we have the field name as first name with the data type of short text. And the same thing, of course, for the last name. Let's go ahead and add birthday. So I'll say, actually, we'll just do DOB, which stands for date of birth. And if I hit the tab key, I can change using the drop down menu from short text to a date and time. Let's go ahead and save our changes. And I'm going to switch back to the data sheet view. Here, I can go ahead and enter in some values for our date of birth. And we even have a little calendar icon here, so I can select from a calendar what the dates of birth will be. And I'll just look for some random date of birth here. Doesn't really matter. 
Same thing for Shane. Hasn't even been born yet. And then for another date, instead of clicking on the calendar item, I'm going to actually go ahead and put in a value myself. So there we have it, our first table with the relevant information using specific data types to contain that specific information that we need for each one of the columns. Yeah.